Welcome to Daedalus U. I'm Paul, coming to you from Brooklyn. Today we're going to take a look at Chapter 12 out of McDougal Little Geometry Textbook. We're going to look at the areas and volumes of solids. So open up to page 476, and first we will read the key theorems. First theorem 12.1, the lateral area of a right prism equals the perimeter of a base times the height of the prism. In other words, as I, has, as I have written up here on the big board, lateral area equals P times H. That's the perimeter of the base times the height of the solid or the prism. Theorem 12.2, the volume of a right prism equals the area of the base times the height of the prism. In other words, V equals capital B times H. So let's just take a quick look at what that means. I think that when looking at prisms or solids, one important aspect is, is a good drawing. So there's a trapezoid, right? Now, if you're going to make this into a prism, basically we're just going to stretch this trapezoid out into a third dimension. So what you want to do is just kind of move away from your original trapezoid and start making another one. And, and make it with um, dotted lines, these first two sides, because dotted lines indicate that they're in the back of the figure and that'll that'll make it look much more three-dimensional in the end right and then you simply connect the lines there's one we're gonna connect this up to the top we're gonna connect this one down to the bottom those lines should be parallel to one another and they are and then this one in the back is going to be dotted because again it's in the back of the figure and then we have a prism made out of a trapezoid so the, the base in this instance is, of course, this original trapezoid. So when we're talking about B, we're talking about the area of that. And then the height is this distance here, you know, how much we've pulled it out into a third dimension. So that's the basics of creating a solid or creating a prism. Let's get down to the questions. Let's start with number 20. That's on page 478, so I'll read it out loud first out of the textbook. Uh, the directions above say facts about the base of a right prism and the height of the prism are given. Sketch each prism and find its lateral area, total area, and volume. So number 20 says we're dealing with an isosceles trapezoid with bases 10 and 4 and legs 5 with a height of 20. So let's go ahead and label our uh, uh, pre-sketched trapezoidal prism. So it's isosceles, meaning these legs are the same. So the legs it told us were five, and they're equal to one another. All right. The other given information says uh, that we have a base of ten, that's the long base, and another base up here, four. And then it says the height is twenty. I'm just going to go ahead and write h equals twenty so we distinguish the height is the distance, again, that we pulled it out into a third dimension. So, let's go ahead and solve first for the lateral area. The lateral area, you remember from just the last page, equals perimeter of the base times the height. So, what's the perimeter of this base? That's simple enough. 10 plus the 4 on top plus the two fives, right? Nope, we need a little plus sign there. And we're going to multiply that by the height of 20. Mm, so let's see, that's 24, right? Times 20, which is 480. Doesn't give us a unit here, but let's uh, be aware that that would be squared meters. Let's just say they're meters, right? Let's say it's all in meters. So that's the lateral area. In other words, that is the area of all of these sides here. So there's one, and then there's the one on top, two, the one on the side, and then, of course, the one on the bottom. That's the area of all of those summed up together. So what's the total area? The question also asked us to solve for the total area. The total area equals the lateral area. Well, we just solved for that, so that's convenient plus 2 times the area of the base. 
So to solve there, we're just going to plug in what we got for the lateral area, which is 480 meters squared plus two times. Now, I think one challenging part of this chapter is you have to remember things from the previous chapter. Chapter 11 dealt with areas of, of two-dimensional figures, such as a trapezoid. And you might remember that that formula, and I'll write out the formula first here, is base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times the height of the trapezoid now. So we have a different h. In fact, I'm going to put a little fancy subscript 1 to indicate that this is a different h than the one given up here. Well, let's go ahead and plug in what we know. We still have our 480 just hanging out waiting for us, plus 2 times, well, our bases are 10 and 4. We know that. That was given. And they're going to be divided by 2. That essentially gives us sort of the average base, in this case, 7, times the h. Well, guess what? We don't have the h. It is not the 5. I repeat, it is not the 5. That is called the leg. So let's grab another color here and go in and figure out what that height is. This is called the leg. And you notice, if you drop an altitude here, then that 5, that leg, is, is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So what is, what is this side here? That's what we want to know. And, and this height is what we need for our formula. Well, think about it. If you dropped another altitude over here, the 4 from up here would be shared here. This would also be 4, just the distance from here to here. Leaving 6, and it's a, it's a regular or an isosceles trapezoid, so that means there's 3 left over here and 3 here. And then notice we have a tidy little... Three, four, five, right triangle. So this height is four, and that's the one we need for our formula down here. I'll keep it in orange so we see where it came from. Right. So four is the is the height or the altitude of the uh, two-dimensional trapezoid. So now we just have some arithmetic to finish here. We have 480, which was the lateral area plus uh, 7 times the 4 is 28. We'll go ahead and say times 2 is 56. And so our total looks like 536. Yes. And again, this is an area, so that would be in squared units, meters squared. Okay, last, we have to find the volume. Well, the volume we know is B times H. And we actually just solved for the area of the base. The area of the base, uh, remember, was right here. So that was all this business of, uh, I'll, I'll rewrite it once here. That was the 10 plus 4, the two bases of the trapezoid, divided by 2, times that height that we found, which was 4. Then times the actual height, remember, of the solid, which is 20. So... 7 times 4, 28, times 20, final answer, mm, what is that, 560. Now this is a volume, so we're talking about meters cubed. Okay, voila. Let's take a look at another one. Question number 26 on the very next page reads as follows. A drinking trough for horses is a right trapezoidal prism with dimension shown below. It is filled with water. About how much will the water weigh? It gives us a hint that one meter cubed of water weighs one metric ton. So, guess what? This problem ends up being almost identical to the last one. Let's take a quick look and see what differences there are. They tell us this is 100 centimeters. They tell us this is 40 centimeters down here. This leg again of the trapezoid is 50 centimeters and the height is 2 meters. Right, so this long distance is 2 meters. Well, if we want to know how much the water weighs, we have to know the volume of the trough. All right, so this is a volume question. So we want the volume of the base, uh, the area of the base, times the height, and that will give us the volume of the trough. Uh, one little twist in this question is, uh, you know, 
converting from the volume at the very end into the metric tons of the weight of water. The other is just uh, watching your units. Beware! Watch your units. We, we're given both centimeters and meters. Uh, but the conversion at the end is from cubic uh, uh, meters. So we want to convert everything to meters as we do this question. So we recall that the area of a trapezoid of this base is equal to the sum of its two bases. So again, we're going to convert to meters. 100 centimeters is one meter, right? Plus 0.4 centimeters. 40 centimeters, sorry, is 0.4 meters. We'll divide that by two to get the average of the bases. Multiply that by that height. Now, wait, we don't have the height. So remember what we did before. In a trapezoid, and you'll often be required to do this, you have to drop a little altitude to get a right triangle, right? So that's a right angle there. And again, we have, uh, if this is 40, what's left over here is 3, right? So uh, 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters. 50 for the hypotenuse, so this is going to be 40 centimeters. In other words, times 0.4, and I'll put that in orange to show that that's the one we really had to solve for. Go back to red to show that then we want to multiply all that by our two meters, which of course is already in meters, so no conversion necessary. Uh, this is 1.4 divided by 2 times 0.4 times 2, which equals what? Uh, 0.7 times 0.4 is 0.28 times 2. Trying to get that dot in there, equals 0.56, right? And that would have been our meters cubed. Well, if, 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 if one cubic meter of water weighs one metric ton, well, then simple enough. 0.56 cubic meters of water is going to give us exactly 0.56 metric tons. terms of the weight. So notice how that question is similar to the last. Right? We're just dealing with taking the volume of a trapezoidal uh, prism. Okay, one last question, then we're done. Question number 29 on the same page. It says find the volume and total surface area of each solid in terms of the given variables. So I've written the figure up here for number 29, but I haven't yet labeled it. So let's go ahead and do so. It says that this length here is 4x. So we're just dealing with a little bit of variables in this question, not so bad. This length is 3x and the height of it is 5x. Okay. It says that this distance here, see there's a hole in it, is x and this is 2x. So this one takes a little bit more thinking, right? We have a figure, but we also have a hole in it. All right, so let's think about what the total area, right? We're going to jump right to total area on this. It wants the total surface area. Well, we know that that equals the lateral area. Always good to write out your formulas. Always good to write out your formulas. Plus the, the area of the two bases, right? So that's the top and bottom. But the problem is once we take the area of this base, we've accidentally included the area of that middle part, right? So we want to actually subtract then two of those little bases. And I'll go ahead and make it a lowercase b, but it still stands for the area of that little base. Does that make sense? All right, I'll put a little note there. That's the area. Um, I'll say area of the whole, right? Because that's really what it is. It's the area of the whole. So we subtract those and that will correct our surface area problem for the area of the base. But then also, think about it, we have this, this, this tube going down the center, running right down the center. So we need to also subtract the surf, uh, I'm sorry, add the, the, the additional surface area that that little central column gives us. So we'll just go ahead, go ahead and say, and then we want to add uh, more lateral area, right? and I'll put a little subscript too. So this is sort of the big one, the first one, the outside, and then we're going to also add the inside. Okay, so you want to do this kind of thinking through the process and using your formulas before we go playing around with the numbers, which we'll do now. 
So uh, let's go ahead and plug in uh, the formulas. We know the surface area for the lateral sides is equal to the perimeter of the base times the height, right? Plus, we'll just keep this as 2 big B minus 2 little b. That's our little correction for the hole. Plus, uh, let's plug in the perimeter then of the little hole times its height. And I'll put a little subscript 2 again to remind us that that's kind of different than the first one. Okay, I think we are ready for numbers. Let's see. What is the perimeter down here? Well, we run 4x here, and then 3x, and then another 4x in the back, which... Uh, I didn't show, but you know, we could kind of put it in there. Right, and then another 3x kind of coming down here. Might as well take this up here and take it to the corner. Now we can kind of see the box and its dimensionality. So the perimeter there is 2 4x, 2 3x, well that's 8 plus 6, that's 14. I'm going to write 14x for the p times the height. Well, here's the height right here 5x. That's how far we pulled that base out. All right, so times 5x plus 2 times the area of the base. Well, that's easy enough. That's 4x times 3x. So that's 12x squared. All right, 4x times 3x is 12x squared. Now minus, let's correct for our hole. What is the uh, uh, area of this little hole? Well, it's x times 2x. That's easy enough. 2x squared. So we're going to subtract two of those, one from the top, one from the bottom. Plus, then, what is the perimeter of the little hole? Well, 2x and 2x is 4x, plus this x is 5x, plus one more is 6x. So plus 6x, and that has the same height of 5x as does the hole prism. Okay? Now we've got our numbers in. All we've got to do is a little bit of algebra. 14x times 5x is 70x squared plus 24x squared minus our correction for the whole, minus 4x squared plus all the surface area we have inside the column which ends up, looks like, being 30x squared. Alright, so the total area is, let's see, 70 plus the 30 is 100, then 124 minus the 4 120 x squared and that would be in units squared we'll just go ahead and leave it as 120 x squared not bad and last task for this video we're gonna go ahead and find the volume of this cube or no this rectangular solid with with a little column a little hole in it so the volume is remember the area of the base times the height. I'm going to put 1 because that's a big one because then we have to subtract, of course, the volume of of that central column. So those little subscripts really stand for the volume of the whole thing minus the volume of the central column, right? The heights, of course, are the same. The heights are both 5x. All right, let's plug in our numbers. The area of the base, well, that's just the 4x times the 3x. So that's 12x squared times that height, we're familiar with by now, is the 5x minus, what's the, the, the area again of the little hole? 1x times 2x, so 2x squared times that same height of 5x. So notice, uh, notice kind of what this question is doing. is showing us how in volume we end up with x cubes, right? Whereas with surface area, we, ends up, we, we end up with x squareds. So 12 times 5 is 60. x squared times x is x cubed. Minus over here, the column ended up being 10x cubed. So our final answer, our volume is 50 x cubed cubic units. That's all for today. Check back in for uh, more parts of this chapter 12. Uh, but as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the future.